which is an equipment, and it has low environmental impact. Step one is to pulverize and mix the existing roadway with a high horsepower recycler. Additional base material may be added to the problem area. Here we go. Road building. For many years, man has experimented with many ways to create great sub-bases that don't wash away, and there are many options to choose from. Please allow us at the IRMCA to take you through the process of full depth reclamation. ReadyMix FDR is a cutting edge process that rebuilds failed secondary roads by recycling existing material into durable, long lasting roadways. It reduces building costs, can be accomplished with local forces and equipment, and it has low environmental impact. Step one is to pulverize and mix the existing roadway with a high horsepower recycler. Additional base material may be added to the problem areas before this step. Recyclers are available to rent from several sources. A motor grader then builds 8 to 10 inch windrows on both sides of the road to keep recycled material in the roadway and out of the ditches. A 22 bag cement slurry is trucked to the site by an Indiana ReadyMix Concrete Association member and applied between the windrows. Once the slurry is applied, the recycler then incorporates the slurry into the pulverized aggregate to the appropriate depth for the roadway use. Several passes may be required depending on the width of the road. A pad foot vibratory roller compacts the recycled material as soon as the recycler has completed the road segment. Depending on the weather conditions, additional water may need to be added to the surface before final grading. In some cases, after the road has been rolled with the pad foot roller and the water has been added, a pneumatic roller is then used to achieve final compaction. The final grade and center crown is then established by a motor grader. In most cases, the roadway can be traveled on within hours of final grade. However, it is best to wait at least 12 hours to open it up to heavy traffic. The surface is not a wearing surface. It is recommended that a minimum wear surface of chip seal, compacted aggregate, asphalt, or concrete pavement is applied as soon as possible. So let's recap the benefits of full depth reclamation. FDR rebuilds existing roads by recycling existing material into a new stable roadway. It reduces costs, it has low environmental impact, and it can be accomplished with local forces and equipment. All right, so I had a little little difficulty there, but we're, we're rolling now, so. Um, that's not what I want. <clears throat> so before we can get too far into this, it's important to just really identify what FDR is and what it isn't. Um, FDR is uh, is grinding up existing material and then adding that cement slurry to it. Um, so what it is actually doing is it is um, improving the existing roadway and. Um, it is not the same as cement stabilization, which takes place when you have virgin ground um, that is, you know, maybe a new parking lot or a brand new road, um, and it's just dirt and sand. Uh, that's when we start talking about cement stabilization, uh, and these two are not exactly the same thing. <clears throat> uh, it's good to talk about where this process works best. Um, the FDR process is really good for highway and city street departments because they can utilize their own crews, their own equipment, and, and it works great to rebuild their roads. It's a, it's a really cost-effective way to, to make a lot of roadway miles strong and smooth. Uh, and that's not to say that it can't be used in parking lots, driveways, or any other form of pavement that you can think of. Um, but it is a and it is a cost effective way to build sub base in your parking area um, just however we do we do see it used most in the windmills uh, and the wind farms <clears throat> um, so a lot of times we see we have these counties right into their contract with the wind farm that their roads will be redone before these 200 some fully loaded trucks come in and destroy the road. Um, so 
So this is an example of the FDR process uh, before the FDR process. So this is a project in Benton County uh, up in, towards Northern Indiana. Um, their county roads are generally built for light traffic and the occasional farm equipment. So not hundreds of heavily loaded trucks. In this particular case, we started bringing in trucks, started bringing in loads of concrete. The road failed and we ended up having to get a bulldozer out there to drag mixer trucks in and out of the pore site. Um, not only was that a problem for construction, slowed down construction, but it also created issues for homeowners that couldn't get to their homes at that point. This is what it looked like after we they uh, completed the FDR process. Um, definitely a big change. Um, it, it created an, a really a much better working environment and it allowed the families uh, to get to their homes. So what are we actually doing? We're going to dive a little deeper here into that, into this process. So we're reusing, we're creating a low grade concrete in the base and we're doing that by reusing the existing roadway. Um, so we're doing this by integrating cement slurry into the roadway via a ready mix truck. Generally, concrete is mixed with the aggregates inside the truck and then placed on the ground. In this case, we're placing the cement slurry on the ground and mixing it with the existing aggregates, um, saving a little bit of money there. <clears throat> Take a look at the inside of a reclaimer. Um, this is a pretty good example of how the reclaimer works. The drum gets uh, lubricated with with water and other stabilizing agents and if that's assuming more stabilizing agents are required uh, that's going to be evaluated on a job by job basis now the drum on most reclaimers can reach anywhere from six to 24 inches deep and this is going to vary by size and brand of reclaimer there's a there's a few different ones out there that you could you could utilize uh, this this drum does an excellent job of grinding up the existing base and the and the distressed pavement, and it's going to grind it up and it's going to thoroughly combine all of that together and and mix it with the granular material, and it's going to all in one step prepare it all for the cement slurry. Just an example of what the drum looks like in real life. You can see those diamond carbide bits there or that uh, they're going to be doing all the hard work. Um, they can be replaced should one of them get broken off. Um, it's a pretty pretty good system here. Quick example of the gradation. Um, you can see this is going to be prior to slurry integration. We can see that they're it's thoroughly pulverized, uh, a varying size of aggregate from fine aggregate to large aggregate. We like to see a combination of the fines all the way up to about a three quarter inch uh, piece, piece of aggregate here. And, and it's gonna vary all throughout that mixture. And we'll see that in a core here in just a second. Um, and we'll talk moisture density relationship. Um, this is developed for field quality control. The, the FDR mixture can be both too dry and too wet, and we generally like to see it around 11% of moisture content. So looking at this graph, we would like to be right in the middle of that graph. Uh, just about anything to the left is gonna be too dry, and it's, it's not gonna compact and reach strength, and anything to the right is going to also not compact, and generally it's gonna squeeze out from underneath that roller, and uh, it won't, it won't reach the strength that we're after as well. And we have a very technical, technical way to determine this moisture content in the field. Um, what we do, we, we take a handful of the material integrated with the slurry, we ball it up in our hands, as you can see here on the top left. And um, when we take our hands back apart, it should leave a little bit of a residue like this picture on the top right. And um, if the mixture crumbles in your hands, it, it's going to be too dry. Um, and if it squeezes out between your fingers like mud, it's going to end up being too wet. Um, so there's a we'll, we'll discuss a little bit about what to do in those situations when we get to the process and how to add water and what to do there. This is a core, uh, an example of a core um, post post FDR process, you can see we got chunks of asphalt in there, chunks of stone in there, 
big pieces, small pieces, um, and, and quite a bit of good paste in there. So you can see it's all pretty well thoroughly mixed. And uh, this is kind of what we end up with. <clears throat> uh, now we're going to jump jump ahead into the design advantages and engineering properties of FDR. Uh, we'll get a little bit technical here. So before we start anything with the FDR process, we, we've got to run a couple tests and figure out what we're working with. So we can, to test for design specifications, um, that's when we determine the cement content. We need to know what's there in the existing pavement. So there are a few ways to determine this. Uh, we can take a core, we can have someone take a core. Uh, most often this, this process is meant for highway departments and we try to make it so that they can perform, self-perform every part of it. So they, we often recommend going out with, a, with some kind of a powered shovel and scoop up part of the road, take a look at what's there, uh, take a sample back if we need to, and then we go from there. If necessary, we'll run trial batches. Uh, we'll, we'll run modified proctor to determine the content and spread rate. And most, more often than not, we can determine the cement content just by knowing what the existing material is. Um, so if there's if there's a still good stone there, it's going to take less content. If it's less than if it, you know if it's a dirt road and there's just loose gravel there it's going to take a little bit more cement content again this method was designed to keep costs low and to be able to self-perform as far as mixed design a couple important pieces of information one one yard of um, cement slurry consists of 2068 pounds of cement and then we add in enough water to make it flow so that means enough water to make it flow out of the concrete plant into the truck and then still retain enough water to flow out of that truck onto the ground. Um, so it's gonna vary a little bit. Now it's important to note that this is, we call it a yard because that's the unit of measure that we sell. That's the unit of measure of the general concrete industry. That's how we bill for our material. If we were to take that 2,068 pounds of cement and then enough water to make it flow and poured it into a three by three by three box. We don't know how much of it it would fill up because the amount of water is going to fluctuate. So the uh, one yard of concrete would fill that. Um, one yard of cement slurry could fill it, could overflow it, it could not fill it up all the way. Uh, it just depends because the water is going to fluctuate uh, depending on which company you go to and how they like to do it. <clears throat> so five pounds of cement per cubic foot. Uh, and that, that will vary depending on how deep your, um, we're reclaiming. So five pounds is easy math uh, for, per cubic foot. And if we're gonna go to a six inch depth, uh, we would cut that in half to two and a half pounds per cubic foot. And if you're, um, so we like to see three to 8% of cement content per 100 pounds. So if you're reclaiming ground that's high in organics like peat, loam, or any other lighter soil, we increase that cement content, get closer to that 8%. Um, <clears throat> so if we're, if once we've got the ground figured out, we figured out what we were working with, if we're running a 3% cement content at a 24 inch depth, that's gonna end up being stronger than an 8% cement content at a six inch depth just because there's more material there holding up the weight. Overall, we want a 1000 PSI strength goal. Uh, anything less than that, and it's it's not gonna perform the way we planned and expect it to. Anything more than that, and it could be difficult to reclaim it again in the future. And we we generally don't see that happening in the, in the next five to 10 years. Uh, but some situations could be having to repair some drain tile that goes under that road or just having to spot repair. And again, you could, uh, some places might reclaim it again, way down the road to fix up the road again. Okay, so now we talked about the design and, and I'll show you this grout calculator 
uh, to show you how we kind of in, input the um, numbers and it'll help us get required yardage and different things like that. So just again, for ease of math, we have we have a length here of one mile, 18 inches, 18 feet, 18 feet wide and 10 inches thick. And again, ease of math, 5% cement, that's gonna end us up with about 10,560 square yards, uh, 267 tons of cement. And um, <clears throat> let's see here, I'm all set. We, can, we even come down into the cost range. Now, each cubic yard isn't gonna be exactly $200 a yard. It's gonna fluctuate, especially with the way things are looking right now. Um, costs are kind of all over the place, but you can get an idea of what your project might cost as far as uh, materials by play, putting in a number there and uh, letting it tell you here per foot, per yard, per load. And if anybody is interested in a copy of this um, um, Excel spreadsheet, I'm more than happy to send it to you and I'll work with you on whatever project you got going on. So that's the calculator. <clears throat> this full depth reclamation process has a few green advantages. Um, Pretty interesting to see uh, when we're talking about a, talking about one mile here on this graph, we're talking about one mile of two lane road at 24 feet wide. Uh, we see a huge reduction of trucks required, uh, new material, we major reduction in new materials required. Absolutely nothing ends up in a landfill and all that re requires considerably less diesel fuel. Um, so it, it's a pretty good, it's significantly better for the environment and your pocketbook uh, as well. So I'll explain a little bit here about how this works well in the county market. Um, we, we promote this to the county markets and the idea that they'll be able to use the equipment that they have and use the force, the guys that they have will be able to to perform this process. So the Indiana County market have seen several, um, we've seen several counties use this. Um, the one I wanna highlight here is Tipton County. The video I showed you was filmed there in Tipton on a project um, maybe about a year ago. Uh, and they have done many, many miles, probably getting 20 to 30 miles uh, of, of roadway in their county and they try to do four or five more each year. Um, they rent they rent the big grinder um, and we have found, we have come up with a lot of good advice and ideas from them um, as, they, as they play with it and get better and better at it. Um, all of their FDR roads that they do, that they have done are still in, in um, use and they do very little maintenance on them each year. Uh, maybe they grade them. They're all chip seal roads and they might touch up here and there, but they overall they don't do a lot of work to them. Some project examples. This is uh, Henry County, Indiana, and uh, you can see this road was pretty pretty darn bad. It's, fail, it's been patched and then kept failing. So they went with the FDR. They utilized their own tractor and their own zipper they didn't rent any equipment for this, and uh, they just put a couple guys on it, and they did an excellent job here. This is the finished product. The roadway looks awesome. It's still being used today. It still looks just like that. Uh, this is Benton County up in northern Indiana. Again, roadways failing pretty significantly. Uh, here we're adding slurry. We got the grinder there on the left, and I do believe this is their own grinder as well, their zipper. Um, again, integrating the slurry, uh, an interesting example on this job is that they, they reclaimed right up to a railroad track and, uh, with no difficulty, you know, right up to that railroad easement. That's, uh, an example in Putnam, Indiana. I uh, can see again, pretty bad. Just a few pictures of, uh, what they, what they did to get it fixed here. And what I want to point out here is the, uh, 
the cores. You can take a look at that core and they've got nice size aggregate, big aggregate, little aggregate, nice limestone. And then you can see it's very thoroughly mixed in there. And uh, it just, it looks like a great mixture there. All right, moving, moving right along, we're gonna jump into the process here and uh, I'll, I'll get into detail basically about what that video showed. So we're going to start with the initial grind. Uh, we're gonna bring that, bring the grinder in and grind the whole road up, the whole, the full mile or however far we're going. Um, we're turning, turning the road up and we're preparing it for the slurry integration. Um, and again, the full length. Now I, I touched a, a few, few slides back about keeping that cement slurry in the, in the roadway, keeping it from running away. Um, so what we do, what we found is the best way to do this is to make windrows on either side with, with the power grader uh, before we put the cement, the cement slurry down. Um, so this will keep the, the slurry from exiting that roadway that we need it on, uh, and that will keep it from not gaining the strength that we need, but also it'll probably more importantly not contaminate any groundwater uh, for the wildlife and the people nearby. We are going to hit it with that slurry addition now. Um, we, slurry, we slurry the entire section that we ground up uh, until we're done. And um, how, you know, we again with the real technical stuff, how do we determine where the load goes? Um, at the lower left corner of the screen, you'll see a pink flag. And uh, prior to, as, as when we're making our specifications, we determine where a load goes. So we set flags out every so many feet. Uh, in most cases, it's about 100 feet. And uh, we tell the truck driver to ensure that his load goes between the flag in front of him and the flag behind him. And uh, if he gets to the back, if he gets to that back flag before he's emptied his entire load, we'll have him pull back up into that slurry and uh, even as even as he can put that cement there on the ground. Um, more on the application. I know it seems like that stuff's just going to flow around and not go in there, but the um, the power of this grinder will put that slurry right where it needs to be. Um, and here, you, in this image, you can see that he's he's already ground one one side of the road, and then now he's at the other side of the road. That's he's on one complete load right there. So you can see the second, the next load is ready for him to come and grind that up to integrate that as well. Um, so we just, he integrates one load at a time. Generally, there's another truck waiting for him, um, which is important to time your trucks well. You can see here, he's finishing up one load. The truck is fin just finishing up, pouring out. And uh, just to the right there, the far right, you can see another mixer truck coming up behind him. It's important to just keep that flow going, keep it timed correctly, and um, that way everybody, you know, we get home before dark, basically. And just uh, the last picture of the integration, you can see the windrows working there. Um, that that grinder will knock that windrow down and pretty pretty um, smoothly put it back into where it needs to be, uh, and then we'll come back later a couple steps down the road to uh, get that with the with the motor grader to get your final grade. Once integrated, this is this is where the pad foot roller comes in. Um, uh, we're gonna <clears throat> so once the pad foot is pretty self-explanatory. The pad foot roller goes over the whole road back and forth a few times, uh, and this is after that goes by. This is the point where we do our super technical moisture test and determine if we're gonna add some water or if we're going to let it bake a little bit in the sun to, to pull out some of that moisture, um, this is the point where that decision is made. So what it looks like to add water, uh, most places have a tank trailer or a tank truck. Um, some, some guys have gotten creative and built this specific applications for their water adding. Um, it's not as specific as adding water to conventional concrete, 
we just want to generally dampen the surface until we reach the desired consistency. That particular job in Tipton that the video was filmed at, uh, this is an image where we added the water there and we wanted to see just a little bit of water puddling. That's pretty, pretty general when it's pretty much what we want to see usually when we're adding water. Uh, this is just an example of how that looked. The next, uh, the, the next couple steps is kind of a matter of preference. Uh, we can hit the hit it with the pneumatic roller after the pad foot roller um, and start getting the final grade, or we can also hit it with the motor grader and then the the pneumatic roller. It's just it's just going to come down to a matter of preference and uh, how how much time you got to make it really make it perfect. Um, so again, we get that final grade with the grader, and uh, this is just kind of a close-up look at the uh, the surface after the, the pneumatic roller and the um, grader has come by. Um, probably one of the more important details of the FDR process starts right here or happens right here is that this FDR surface is not a wearing surface. So it's important to know to note that we need to put some sort of surface on there. Uh, if we don't, we're going to see this crumble up and kind of return to stone um, as there's nothing protecting it. So what kind of wearing surface are we looking for? Uh, we generally see in the county option to, to do chip seal um, and uh, other there are a few other options like a thin layer of asphalt, thin layer of concrete, um, and uh, just any good composite pavement. We've even had um, a situation where the only thing on a road, on this road, was a hog barn, hog farm, where they see, you know, 10 or 20 heavy trucks every day. They decided for that particular job that they were going to put a large amount of stone, 53 stone or 11 stone over the top of it, uh, about 6 to 10 inches deep, and they were able to regrade that road uh, as necessary. So if they needed to do it once a week, they could but they made sure that that road stayed smooth and would hold the weight. So that is pretty much the full deal. FDR did, went through that kind of quickly. Um, if anybody has any questions, I'm happy to, to hit on those questions. Um, like I said, I am available at, at no cost to, to you guys to consult on your projects. Here's my contact info. Um, Go ahead and open it up for questions. All right, well, if there's no questions, I just say again, thanks everybody for tuning in and learning about a little bit about FDR, and we're glad to have you. Uh,